Hey everybody, my name is Lucas and in this video we are going to take a look at Google Sheets and see if it can function as a setup for getting things done or GCD for short. So this was an interesting one and it was also a challenging one to set up but I've come up with something that at least on a couple of levels will actually do the job. Um, so let's just dive right in. Uh, before we get started though, there are two things to keep in mind here when setting up a system like this in Google Sheets. And those are conditional formatting and data validation. Those two really make or break this system. And we're gonna dive into examples to see how those two concepts work exactly. So uh, in the first level, we have next actions. And we've actually set this up as a tab within this spreadsheet document. You can create extra tabs using this add sheet button at the left bottom corner. And we will go through the other tabs as well as we go along. But first on the ground level, here we have our next actions. So uh, what we've done here is kind of froze the first row, which we can do by selecting it and then by freezing that row. And that way when we sort uh, rows based on task or context or anything else, it won't take the initial row with that, which is obviously what we don't want to do. So uh, here, the name of the task is defined by you and the context, time needed or energy levels is also a dimension that many GTDers apply here and the project is related to as well as the status. Now you can see that there are these drop down options present in the context, time needed and uh, uh, the project uh, levels here. So how does it work? Well, that's actually where uh, data validation comes into play. So with data validation, what you can do is select any cell or a collection of cells. So in this case, I've selected every cell in the B column related to context and applied uh, data validation by uh, taking data from another portion of this document. So that's what you can actually do here by selecting a data range. I've already done it here, but if you press that button, you can navigate to any other portion of the spreadsheet. And in this case, that's kind of hidden at the end here with the data inputs spreadsheet. What you can do here is basically provide any input that should be present in a drop down option separated per dimension. So what you can see for context, I've put the following options because that's the range that the data validation selects. Uh, home, office, and city. And you can add any other context, any amount as you wish. That's up to you. Same goes for the time needed dimensions. And there's a couple of other ones that are will become present in uh, another section here. But also the status one, uh, to make this you know more visually appealing, you can kind of check things off by using the checked or unchecked emojis. So those uh, work and can be formatted inside of Google Sheets as well. And those are uh, how this works on the next action uh, level by just selecting the options presented in data validation. Now, what you'll also see is that they have separate colors. Uh, this is just, again, to make it more visually appealing. <laughs> That's a challenge on its own in, uh, in the spreadsheet already. So let's at least make it look as pretty as we can, right? Uh, and uh, not have it just be a wall of dry text that you're going to stare at. That's not going to make you more productive. So uh, imagine uh, adding a new task here, like my task. What you'll see is that it automatically actually applies some sort of design to it. Same goes if we select a certain context for this task, a time, and by selecting a certain project. Now, how does that work? That's actually the magic of uh, conditional formatting. So what you can do is select a cell or again, a range of cells, which is what I've done in this case, and select the conditional formatting option under format. Now, what you saw happen as soon as we typed something or selected an option per cell, it uh, got a design. That's because we've defined the uh, rule, so the condition for design to appear as the cell being not empty. So hence, filling up the cell will apply a certain design to it. And uh, uh, those uh, conditional formatting rules are different per range of cells. And so you can uh, uh, create those rules and apply different colors to contexts time needed. And you might even go further, just do what works for you. You might wanna give different colors to different contexts. 
Uh, that's all up to you and that's the freedom you have by using this uh, system. What you could also do on this level is actually hide tasks that are, have been completed. So you don't have to manually delete them, but instead you could apply a uh, filter and uh, filter by value and just uh, select or unselect any values that you don't want to see. So uh, if we want to make sure that completed tasks are not visible, we can just filter those out and there you go, it's no longer visible. And that will continue to apply to new items that will get the completed status. That way all you see are open next actions. So that's pretty good. Moving on to the projects level. So what you're seeing here is that every task is related to a project. Doesn't necessarily have to be, but in that case, you can just leave this empty or you can create another project in addition to the ones we have here called single actions, for example. So how did this drop down work here in the project section? Well, that's again, just data validation, but instead of using the data input folder here, we actually just went ahead and moved it into selecting any option available from this particular uh, row, uh, which contains names of these projects, right? So right now we have one project called Clean the House and we have two, well, we have three actions for that. And two of those are next actions, which we've already seen in the table, which is uh, do the dishes and uh, clean uh, the living room. So how does this work with that other item and why is it say, why does it say invalid well that's the idea here with uh, uh using google sheets for projects that have sequential tasks so in this fictional project mopping the floor for me is not going to be possible until i complete these other actions first so what i've done is actually just manually type the uh, uh task name um, but because here too, there is uh, data validation present, which pulls any tasks from the task column in this particular spreadsheet, it will only allow me to select, pre-select, I should say, any task that I have defined in there, including the one you just saw me create, which will in turn not produce this kind of red error marker. So this is instead of, you know, uh, perceiving it as an error, what this actually means is this action is part of this project, but it's not a next action yet. And once it is, you can actually define it separately here or just copy paste it to make it even easier, at which point you can see now that the red marker has been removed. When it comes to marking completed tasks, there's a couple of options. You can delete it, but what I recommend is actually just crossing them like this and that way you know exactly what is the next action if you want to review that from a project basis, uh, which might be handy in a weekly review, for example. Uh, and again, you can just move and further and further ahead to the right. Uh, it's a pretty flexible system, but you'll probably not have much more than like 10, 20 projects at the same time. I tend to have way less than that even, hence why this would be pretty realistic for me. But again, you can just go ahead and define new projects use data validation to pull any actions to select from the next actions list and define separate actions that are no, not next actions at this moment in time by just manually inputting them and override basically the drop down menu. Cool. So now we've had next actions and projects. Now let's move a couple of levels higher. So we have goals, vision and purpose. Um, I actually didn't work this out in full detail simply because there are just so many ways to go here, so many options to define this in Google Sheets. I think this is where it really can become pretty strong. So let's say I have a goal that I want to own 10 docs by the end of 2021. And one related project that you might have noticed here is to adopt a doc and the next action is to visit the shelter. So currently I have eight Docs, and this is something I can, you know, review once a week during my weekly review, like the state, the progression of a project. But Google Sheets is also obviously very strong in visualizing data. So what you could actually do is insert all kinds of charts and, and diagrams and connect those to the specific uh, 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 cells and, uh, and columns and you name it to visualize progress on a goal in any way you please. Uh, so I would say make use of this and uh, watch tutorials on how to create certain types of diagrams. That's not what this video is about. This is just to show you uh, 
you know, and inspire you how you can get your system going with Google Sheets. So this is why I've left this pretty simple, but sky's the limit. Same goes for defining your vision and your purpose. You can just put those here or you can create those in separate uh, uh, um, tabs if you want to be more elaborate there. Or just use another system for it because as you might uh, uh, have already guessed, this is not a complete comprehensive GCD system and you will need supplemental tools to really make it a complete setup, which we'll go over after we've uh, reviewed the tabs here. Just to finish this portion though, uh, the tickler file is actually also uh, possible to use uh, within a spreadsheet. However, you will need a specific add-on which you can get from the Google Workspaces uh, marketplace. So what you can do is navigate to add-ons and uh, I already installed it and I will provide a link to the specific add-on I'm using here. It's called document add-ons and it will allow you to set reminders for specific cell items. So uh, this will send you an email, which in turn, obviously you can receive, uh, you know, anywhere like your phone or your PC, whatever you use, and you treat those as reminders and then potentially move them out of the tickler file into next actions or whatever it is that it's concerns. Someday maybe I just left this empty because this is pretty straightforward. Just drop your items that you want to process at, an, at a later time here. You might want to categorize them, but that's, pretty much speaks for itself on how to do that. You just categorize in any way you see fit with columns, rows, or other table related functionalities. Lastly, we go to the agendas and uh, waiting for section here. So I've grouped these two together here because what we're going by is the person or the meeting its concerns uh, as the starting point. So you can see here person one, person two, person three, and you can put talking points X, question Y you want to ask, or maybe an item you're waiting for from this person, all grouped under their uh, uh, column here. And again, there's data validation present. So I already put in some manual uh, inputs here, but you can also select names or meetings that you define as such inside of the data inputs, which you can see here, and then have those automatically added uh, as you add them into the data input and just you know, I want to ask Andre something or I'm waiting on something for Maria and uh, I have to discuss uh, something with Pedro. Well, now I've got those lined up neatly inside of this particular tab. So again, I think this really shows that data validation is really the uh, uh, glue that holds the system together inside of uh, uh, Google Sheets. And uh, just to reiterate, as you can tell, it's not complete, right? Where's the inbox? Well, I don't think anybody will have an easy, quick capture time by using Google Sheets. It just takes some time to load. It's a hassle. Uh, so what I actually recommend are two tools for the inbox and for the uh, reference uh, portion, respectively, within the Google suite, so to speak. Uh, for the inbox, I would recommend Google Keep, which I will link in the description. And for reference, I would recommend Google Drive, which you can use in so many ways, store documents, but also create Google Docs to write or copy certain documents over and store them there as your reference components, your, your reference library. So all in all, this is kind of a hacky way to use Google Sheets as a task manager and also implement some higher level views. Is it gonna work for everybody? I don't think so. I think if you're you know, a geek like me, you might enjoy this and it was fun to set up, but uh, it's not something I uh, prefer. But if you're on a budget, it's free. So go ahead and give it a try. I'm curious what uh, you guys come up with. And this setup will also be available as a template for you to download and import into your Google Sheets so you don't have to start from scratch. And that will too be in the description of this video. So thank you for watching and good luck with setting up your GCD system.